On December 9th, 1531, at the base of a mountain not unlike this one, a man named Juan Diego was walking to morning mass on a Saturday morning, and a beautiful woman appeared to him. She was clothed in a kind of supernatural glory, and she spoke these incredible words to him. She said, I am the mother of the true God. Over the course of the next days, the image of her would be emblazoned on his tilma, or like his poncho, and to this day, you can still see the image in the Basilica in Mexico City, and here's what it looks like. Now much has been said about this miraculous image and about the intricate symbolism of it and what it meant to Juan Diego and to the people there. What I want to talk about today though is her message and what the message of what she said to Juan Diego meant. To understand that though, you have to understand the culture in which he lived. Now this is 1531, so it's about 10 years after the, Me the Spanish came and conquered Mexico City. You know, even though there were European Spanish there, bringing the message of Christianity still, the dominant worldview was an Aztec one. What was that? The Aztecs were a very prosperous, advanced, sophisticated culture. But beneath that sophistication was a frenetic activity of human sacrifice. That Human sacrifice was driven by fear. They offered sacrifices to all the various gods of things that they needed. Sun gods, uh, fertility gods, rain gods. Why did they do that? Well, they wanted the things that they needed. What did Mary say to Juan Diego that was so powerful? She said, I'm the mother of the true God, the Lord of all things both near and far. What she was signaling to them was that there is a, a God who is outside of all of creation. And she was implying your, the hearts that are leading you to do all these terrible actions of human sacrifice, in, in, including things like sacrificing their own children. Those hearts are made for God and he alone can satisfy them. And I'm bearing him forth to you in my son. Well, now we might write that off and say, well, those, uh, you, you know, indigenous people from a long time ago doing these human sacrifices, well, we're sort of beyond that. Well, are we? Are we that beyond um, what human sacrifice stands for, this frenetic activity to try to satiate our own desires? Just a couple examples from our own culture. Think of our desire for safety. How much money do we spend on insurance? Now, I'm not criticizing insurance, insurance companies or people who sell insurance, though it's a good thing. But boy, we sacrifice a lot to insurance. We have a lot of fear of things, of, of things going wrong, life insurance, house insurance, car insur insurance, all of it. Do we sometimes give in to the temptation to think that um, safety, comfort will bring us the deepest peace we desire? Another example. We live in, it's no secret, we live in a prosperous culture with a lot of material goods. Think of a mall on a, on a Sunday afternoon. Think of the frenetic activity. How many of those things in the shops do we really, really need? The next uh, technological gadget or the next um, uh, uh, style of clothing or, or whatever, right? We all know that no matter how much we buy or have, we're still hungry for more, right? Look beneath just the externals of Aztec culture and our culture, and what do you see? Insatiable desire. When Mary says to Juan Diego, I'm the mother of the true God, she's saying there's something outside of this world, the true God who's now breaking in to save you. What do we need to be saved from? Insatiable desire. We need, we need the quenching of our desire. We desire above all God, love, eternal life, infinite relationship. What she did for his culture was she set them free from, uh, from human sacrifice and brought in a peace which to this day you can still see in Mexican culture. Does our cult culture need anything less? Look, the, the desires of the Aztecs, their hearts, their desires, those are our hearts. Those are our desires. What we're called to do is to hear the same message 
from the Virgin Mary, which is, she's the mother of the one true God. And when we receive that gift, what we start to experience is the quenching of our desires that no earthly thing can fulfill. And that transforms everything. Mm -hmm.